I'm back with another video for you today. I'm here in ZGO Perfumery in San Francisco, in the Castro District, and I've got Nick here with Gallivant Perfumes. We're gonna talk about his brand and four fragrances, and you're also gonna have a chance at winning one of the fragrances coming right up. I've got Nick here, and he's gonna to explain to us about his brand, four fragrances that were launched back in March, was Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yes. So um, I launched in the US uh, late March this year, 2017. Um, I've spent two years developing the brand, Galavant, uh, a word that I love because it's got a sense of humor mm -hmm. about it. What does it mean? It means to wander, to walk, to travel, to discover. Often there's a sense of doing something on foot, in terms of gallivant, you would say, for example, in, in England, we would say he gallivanted around town. I've been gallivanting around town. Exactly. Cool. So it had a nice sense of humor that appealed to me. Um, so I spent two years developing it, working with two independent female perfumers, Karine Chevalier, who's based in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've heard of her. She's someone I had done a little bit of work with uh, in my time at L'Artisan Parfumeur. That's how we knew each other. Um, but we just share a sense of humour, which was very important to me, a sense that perfumery should be pleasurable. Um, and similarly with Georgia, who's the other perfumer I worked with, who's Italian, Georgia Novara. Uh, I think she's a big star to watch for the future. She trained under Bertrand de Chauffour. Oh. Yeah. And is that how you were connected with... Absolutely. So obviously Bertrand... Yeah, absolutely. So Georgia actually worked in our lab at L'Artisan Parfumeur, uh, in the office. Um, so I saw her work, I saw a style of perfumery that I admired. It's quite Baroque in a way, quite Italian. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also like the idea of having someone in London, someone in Paris, someone in Italy, in Venice, oh, cool. creating this line. Just tell me a little bit about your, your, your uh, time at L'Artisan, because I'm a fan of the brand. Good. Just tell us a little bit and, and how you did that and then what made you jump into yeah, creating your Yeah, so um, I'd worked for big commercial brands uh, and I was a customer of Lattison Parfumer. So Zing, for example, was the first fragrance of Lattison that I bought as a customer. Uh, and then one day I got a call to go and work there. Uh, and as I genuinely loved the product, it wasn't really a very hard decision that I would go and work as the creative director uh, developing the products for Lattison. So I was there for seven years. Oh, cool. um, and I got to work with some brilliant star perfumers like Bertrand, but I also really was exposed to the materials because we had a lab in our office, mm -hmm. um, just opposite the Louvre in central Paris. So it was a wonderful chapter, um, but I also knew I wanted to do my own brand and create my own line. Um, I think I'd known that even at the start of my career in perfumery. So, so you always knew you wanted to create your own brand? Yeah, I think That's I awesome. did. Uh, I probably couldn't have articulated it 20 years ago. Um, and I'm glad I worked for a lot of other people because I learned a lot along the way. Um, but I always knew I wanted to express my own style um, and my own style of perfumery and my own, my own creation. Cool. So tell us a little bit about the four fragrances. So the four fragrances come, uh, first of all, in a 30 ml bottle. Cool. Uh, and I chose to do this because I'm someone that lived between London and Paris for many years and I commuted between different cities. So I really felt the need personally to have smaller, simpler things in my life. Uh, and I'm really encouraged because lots of people, it turns out, want small travel friendly products yeah um, and I also feel that lots of people like the idea that they can buy London um, but they they can also buy Tel Aviv they can mix it up they can have a little wardrobe of fragrances mm -hmm. which they can't necessarily do if they've got a big 100 ml because it takes a long time to get through 100 ml true so all four of them are inspired by cities that I know and love so I live in London um, it was in some ways the first of the four to start developing. Um, it's a given. And it started yeah. with a song in my head, uh, The Pet Shop Boys, West End Girls, which if any of you all... Love that song. If you don't know it, then I really encourage you to look it up and listen to the song because the lyrics are beautiful and there's a rhythm to it that I really like. Uh, it seems to sum up something for me that captures the grit and the glam 
of London. Grit and Glam. Um, the Grit and Glam. So it's a fragrance that is really built around the Rose de May Absolute, okay. the Grass Rose of May, the Gentifolia, which is lush and green and has these kind of honeyed notes. Um, but as well, we married it with a cucumber. Uh, I wanted to say something about how wet and green London feels. Interesting. Um, I live near a canal in the centre of the city, uh, so it's green and wet, um, but also it's a wet climate. We try and say it isn't, but often it's raining in London. So it felt right that the fragrance should feel wet. Um, but also it's a leathery fragrance. Mm. Um, leather, patchouli, rose is in some ways quite a classical uh, accord of uh, independent niche perfumery. But I feel marrying this rose cucumber leather has created something really wearable, Very wearable. lush, addictive and wet and green. Unisex. Totally, yeah. Totally unisex. And I was telling you a little earlier <clears throat> that I got the tea vibe. Yes. But I'm getting, now I've figured out what that is. It's okay. the cucumber. The cucumber, okay. Yeah, because I was saying... with the combination of the other notes comes okay. off like it's tea? Yeah, the f yeah, maybe a slightly bergamot tea note in there somewhere. Um, there isn't really a bergamot note, but mm -hmm. sometimes associations come when you smell something that isn't necessarily wrong. Yeah. It's a good one. Very Thank wearable, you. easy to wear, yeah. I'm trying to actually create perfumery that's very elegant, um, of course, but wearable, uh, unashamedly wearable. Yeah. I'm not one of those brands that necessarily is trying to do novelty for novelty's sake. I see. Um, they're quite classic French perfumes in one way. So we smell the next fragrance, which is Istanbul. Um, and Istanbul. So you know Istanbul, you've been to Istanbul? I, I know all of these cities very well. So um, I've been to Istanbul probably 25 times. Wow. Um, I've been as a kid too. Yeah. A couple times. So I oh. lived in the Middle East. Um, so it's very easy always to go to Istanbul because it's really the gateway traveling to the Middle East. Often you fly or take the ship through totally. Istanbul. Um, so I wanted to reference this city that feels to me very Middle Eastern, mm. um, you know, ambery, Oriental, sort of vanilla, tonka bean love this kind one. of notes, rich and sophisticated. Again, a slightly leathery note, a slightly animalic feeling, uh, vanillic definitely, but not too sweet, I hope. I've tried to avoid making it feel too feminine, too much like a sort of classic Shalimar type Oriental. What's the aromatic? I'm getting like something very... It's quite herbal, it's quite vegetal, so there's like a red thyme, for example, mm. in the head. Uh, there's a cardamom note. Okay. I'm sure many of your followers really love cardamom. I love cardamom. It brings a lot of freshness. Uh, I feel it cleanses the palate, even smelling it. Yeah. Uh, I also use a, a lavender, lavender. In the heart. Lavender, okay. Uh, which is interesting to me because is it feminine, is it masculine? It is both, depending on the cultural references. Uh, and there's also, in the heart, a very lush, beautiful geranium mm. note. Slightly rosy, but it brings a very spicy. Nice spicy comfort to the Istanbul fragrance. I love this one. Thank you. Yeah, I really say like I wear this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I wear London <laughs> and Istanbul a lot. They're, they're very nice. Istanbul. Uh, next, why don't we stay in that part of the world? Uh, we'll go to Tel Aviv. Uh, so Tel Aviv, a city that's never been done as a fragrance before um, and in Tel Aviv there's this very strong white Bauhaus architectural presence um, it's a sunny Mediterranean city there's mm. the beach it's warm so you know when I was explaining to Karin who did Tel Aviv with me that I wanted that kind of feeling of warmth heady musky she suggested we work with the jasmine as well the jasmine Sandback absolute um, but the difficulty in a way with that jasmine is to make it more modern and more appealing to men and younger people. Um, so we've used some slightly fruity notes like the clementine in the head, uh, which adds a little bit of bitterness to it actually. Uh, and I hope opens it up. You know, Tel Aviv is a city on the sea, on the beach. You've got this sort of feeling of the ocean in front of you. It doesn't feel like a claustrophobic place. No, it's open. Yeah, absolutely. It's on um, the coast. 
And I wanted this feeling in Tel Aviv of openness to the ocean and openness to the world, a cosmopolitan city, yeah. a party city, a foodie city, but a warm beach city. It's very warm, but it's very floral. It's a, it's a big Fresh floral. floral yeah. It's a big floral. I mean, we've used obviously the jasmine, but freesia as well, mm. which I help adds transparency and freshness. Interesting. Yeah. Um, there's also a little bit of tuberose in there. There's a little bit of rose in there. But above all, for me, this is a jasmine fragrance. Mm. Uh, but we've also used some musks and sandalwoods to warm it up. Uh, and also an ingredient that people don't talk about a lot, but it's Leatrix, Deer's Tongue Absolute. Deer's Tongue. Deer's Tongue Absolute. So is this a, is this a, is this a synthetic? Or it's a natural. It's a natural. It's a natural ingredient. Okay. Um, it's slightly tobacco -y. It's a leaf. Never heard of this smell With before. a tobacco -y feeling, a smokiness to it, which I think adds to the warmth. Uh, I also think it makes it more appealing to men. It's very unisex for a floral. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been very pleasantly surprised, I have to say, by how many men say to me that this is their favourite of the four. Wow. I expected in a way this was maybe going to tend a little more feminine, uh, but men are really responding to this. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful, yeah. This one's good. So the next city is an American city. An American city. Uh, I wanted to do... San Francisco. Brooklyn <laughs> to start with, uh, simply because I know Brooklyn better than I know any other American place. Okay. Um, maybe next time you'll have So maybe this. next time, after I get the chance to gallivant around San Francisco, the San Francisco fragrance will come to me. Um, but Brooklyn, to me, is life on the sidewalks. Mm. It's a go, go, go energy. It's the energy of a big city, but it's also feeling that there's nature present and there's a lot of light, big skies, blue skies, light. Uh, I also wanted to say something about a Negroni cocktail because it's the first time I'd really, uh, as a young man, had a Negroni cocktail I discovered in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Mm. Um, so there's this sort of orange It's my favorite feeling. cocktail, by the way. Good choice. <laughs> um, but a quite bitter orange, bigger ad rather than a sort of very pulpy orange. Um, so again, I think this is interesting and easy to wear on one level. Uh, beautiful, I hope, of course. It goes without saying that a perfume should be beautiful. But also as you wear it on the skin, it evolves a lot. All of them evolve. Uh, and I think you get into this heart, which is creamy, uh, slightly gourmand, slightly foody. Um, there's the orris in there, the orris concrete. Um, so it feels very white and innocent to me. I'm married with a cardamom, again, in the top notes, and it makes a lovely feeling. Uh, the magnolia essence in the heart. And then it becomes very musky. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily the most long-lasting of the four, because it's very fresh and citrusy. Um, but it's got this energy that I think people really enjoy wearing. I was surprised how much I liked this one. Good. I really liked it. And I, I thought I was like, okay, this is just simple. Yeah. But I just, something about it. And it, if you, it, compared to wearing, I mean, smelling it on this strip, yeah. Uh, yeah. on me, it's the creaminess comes out. Yeah. It's kind of milky creaminess. Yeah, it is very milky. Like almost on like, a, like an orange creamsicle. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's in a way something that I think is maybe the signature for me of what I'm trying to create with Galavant is that they're fragrances that people should be able to get instantly. There should be a likability instantly with this kind of perfumery. But you should be pleasantly surprised on wearing them that other things come out, other things express themselves. And that's the beauty of using some very special raw ingredients like the RS, like the Rose de May Absolute. Mm -hmm. um, they really do express themselves over time. Yeah, I like the Brooklyn a lot. So is there a favorite of the four? I think Istanbul is my favorite. Okay. So I would, I would rate them um, Istanbul, Brooklyn, okay. London, Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Yeah. Great. I love that. I love that orange. That orange is really nice. Yeah. I think the Brooklyn makes for an excellent signature fragrance. Like if you're somebody that doesn't have a lot of fragrances, yeah, and you want something simple, <clears throat> yeah, and that's what I would I would go for at Brooklyn. It's just awesome. Simple, but with some nice contrast behind it that comes out on the wear. Yeah, it's clean also. It's very clean. Very clean. It's fresh. Um, it's for being in Brooklyn while it's really hot out. Yeah, to refresh yourself. Yeah, 
there's a slightly linden blossom feeling to True. it as well. It's almost like Brooklyn on a nice warm spring day. True. Yeah. To me, on the strip, it's more like the flowers of the orange. Yeah. On me, it's the actual orange fruit more with the milky creaminess. Okay. Interesting that way, but. And but, warm, musky as well. True, very warm, yeah. The yeah. warmth comes out. So I'm sometimes asked by people, have I got a favorite? And of course, it's very hard for me to say. Yeah, what is your favorite? What is my favorite? But I have to confess, uh, maybe London is the one I wear the most. Uh, I find something in the leather, rose, cucumber accord very intriguing. I keep listening to it. I keep coming back to it. I just find it very addictive and lush. Mm -hmm. Um, I do like leather notes a lot, um, but I find sometimes that the leather notes can be a little harsh. Yeah, it can be. A little too rough. Uh, and I think what's really attractive in London is that the leather note feels soft and suede-like and sophisticated. Totally, yeah. Um, so, price-wise? Price-wise... In American dollars. In American dollars, I am $95. Um, for 30 ml. For 30 ml eau de parfum. Very portable. Portable, 30 ml bottles. nomad bottle, travel friendly, live with them, take them everywhere. As you gallivant around. Gallivanting around with fragrances. <laughs> and they come in a beautiful box. They do indeed. Which we can see which is right behind us. Behind right us um, where I'm inspired by the cities themselves. And I'm inspired, I don't know if you can see the maps on each of the uh, packaging. So, you know, finding your way in perfumery. Gallivant's also about finding your way around these cities um, and recognizing something about the place instantly. And I also love maps. So it's love maps quite too. natural that I use maps as part of the codes of the brand. Yeah. So yeah, these are really cool. What do you see in the future? What, are you, have you had more cities in mind? I do. I have a couple of cities up my sleeve for the Can you give fall. us a clue? Um, I will be doing two more European cities. Oh, no San Francisco? No San Francisco <laughs> just yet. Um, so I'll be doing a city which is very close to London, Amsterdam. Ooh. Um, which I think is going to surprise a lot of people. I love Amsterdam. I think it's a real genre-defying fragrance. It's not going to smell of marijuana and it's not going to smell of the red light district. <laughs> um, and then I'm also going to do heading slightly further to the east, a German city, Berlin. Ooh. Uh, Berlin because I have a real affection for Berlin, I have a gang of friends in Berlin. And I'm trying to really capture a carefree summer, but also something darker smokier, woodier, more somber. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another side of Berlin. Berlin has a dark yes. side. Absolutely. <laughs> For sure, it has a dark side. And then San Francisco, I'd love to do another American city. Um, you have to do the, the West Coast. You've done East I've Coast. I've done the East Coast, so West Coast next. Yeah. <laughs> um, San Francisco is a city I can walk around, and I can gallivant around. Um, I spent a few hours yesterday in the park at the Presidio. So I sort of had in my mind yesterday the woodiness, the pine. It's pretty woody and piney there. The pine smells, the cypress. Um, so you got a little bit of a sea breeze as well. A little sea breeze, but more woody to me actually than the sense of the ocean here. Hmm. Yeah. So can't time, wait for that one. Time <laughs> Watch this space. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, should we tell them a little bit about the giveaway? We're doing a giveaway for one full bottle. Absolutely. So this giveaway will be open to USA residents. Yeah. And it has to be a subscriber of this channel. Yeah. And one lucky subscriber will get a chance to win a bottle of a Galavant fragrance of your choice. And the requirement is to put down which, uh, which is your favorite city to travel to when you're vacationing. Put that down and also put down why you want to win and the name of your state. And uh, make sure you're subscribed. And in three to five days, we'll run the randomizer and select one lucky subscriber of this channel to win a bottle of your choice of either Istanbul, London, Tel Aviv, or Brooklyn. Anything else you want to say? Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you're interested by Galavant and I hope you get a chance to smell them as well. That's important. Thank you. Yes, guys, uh, there are some really good ones here. My favorite, as I said, is Istanbul, but I also love Brooklyn one because of the orange creaminess. And London 
kind of comes off like tea to me, but I think it's the cucumber. I think it's that. Yeah. Maybe with a bit of the violet leaf as well. The violet leaf. Yeah. Yeah. And I like Tel Aviv too. It's got that jasmine, which is really fun, but very masculine or unisex jasmine. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. That's what I was trying to achieve with it. Yeah. The jasmine that has broader appeal than the old school It's jasmine. definitely not a feminine jasmine. Yeah. All right, Nick, thank you so much thank for doing so this much video. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome, thank you. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please put down uh, comments as to what you think about this line. Have you tried them? Are you curious to try them? Or are you going to sample them anytime in the future so we can get a conversation started? Also, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. If you want to find out more information about Galavant, I'll have a link to Galavant's website in the info box. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Goodbye. Thank you.